Thank you all very, very much for being here. Senator Wicker is um, on his way in a meeting and will be over here, um, we hope, before everything wraps up. But I wanted to thank him for being such an extraordinary partner in this effort. This was bipartisan legislation right from the start. It was always important that folks know that this isn't related to any party or, or any organization, but it's about our young men and women who serve our country and to make sure they have everything that they need. We expect to have good news in the next day or so. The National Defense Bill, which includes the Jacob Sexton Military Suicide Prevention Act, passed the House last week and is expected to pass the Senate this week. It looks like it will be signed into law before the year is out. And I want to thank, as I said, my, uh, my teammate Roger Wicker on this. I want to thank everybody else who's been there every step of the way. The Sexton family and all the organizations who are here with us today and who has been here with us every step of the way. The National Guard Association of the United States. The Enlisted Association of the National Guard of the United States the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, the American Association of Suicidology, the National Military Family Association, the National Alliance on Mil Mental Illness, the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. For nearly two years now, we have worked nonstop on the critically important issue of preventing military suicide. Hoosier Jeff Sexton from Farmland, Indiana, heard me when I was uh, at the confirmation hearing of Secretary Hagel and when I asked about questions on how we can improve efforts in military suicide. Jeff emailed our office and said, count me and my family all in to help. And they have been from the very start. I called him and with his blessing, we've worked together on this legislation and named it after his son, Jake. It's aimed to help end the scourge of military suicide. I'm grateful to the Sexton family for everything they've contributed to get to this day. I remember Jeff saying to me, if there's one thing good that can come out of Jacob's loss, let's make that happen. We're losing hundreds of young men and women each year in the military to suicide. In 2013, we lost 132 young men and women in combat. We lost 475 young men and women to suicide. That's happened two years straight now. In the first quarter of this calendar year, we lost 120 young men and women to suicide. So we're right on almost the same exact pace as 2013. We have to break the chain and we have to end the tragedy that this causes in each family. Jake's story, an Indiana farm kid, an extraordinary young man who served in Iraq who served in Afghanistan. And while he was home on R&R &R from Afghanistan, he took his life at the age of 21. And we lost Jake and all the great things that he would have done for the rest of his life. We lost all his talents. Um, his dad laughed and said, uh, as a few of you have heard me say, his dad said, Jake was a regular Hoosier kid. He put his truck in a couple of cornfields every now and then, uh, worked here and there, had a wonderful life. And he said, and there's not a day that goes by that my heart doesn't ache when I come in the house to see him again. And we may never fully understand the reasons that these things happen, but they don't happen just in coming home from combat situations or in combat situations. They also happen to young men and women who have never uh, been overseas, who have never been deployed. And so this is a service-wide problem. And it is not only for active duty, as you know, but for guard and for reserve as well. The bill recognizes that beating this scourge is a critical component of military readiness. First, it requires annual mental health assessments for all service members, active duty, guard, and reserve. Right now, the best and most consistent mental health service is for those who are on the deployment cycle. But as was mentioned, this also happens outside of the deployment cycle. And we want to make sure that everybody has a chance to have somebody to talk to and to get mental health assistance. Two is to maintain strong privacy protections for service members. We must ensure that seeking help remains a sign of strength 
not something to be ashamed about or embarrassed about. We protect the privacy of the service member coming forward. That privacy is ensured by guaranteeing medical privacy protections for these mental health assessments that are done. And third is to require a Pentagon report to evaluate existing military mental health programs and to take a look at them and see what's working, what's not, what's best practices, how can we make them a little bit better. And so that's what we're going to do as well. That report is due within a year so that we can take the best of the Navy, the best of the Marines, the best of the Army, the Air Force, the Coast Guard, um, and put that all together into the best package. Also, uh, to see what we can do so that some of the people who are closest to our men and women, um, both at home and in the deployment cycle, their uh, battle buddies, their platoon commanders. We find that when you go from, from bottom up as opposed to top down, we're able to identify more issues, we're able to solve more problems. This is a major step forward. It makes mental health screening a requirement for all service members, and our goal is to get that number from 475 down to zero. Um, can it happen? We believe someday it can, but we can certainly start making progress in the right direction. We're going to work on this every day. I'm extraordinarily proud of all of my colleagues in the Senate and in the House for helping get us to this point, and to all of you for your tireless work, to our service members who we owe this to. This makes a difference in their lives, and that's what our job is to do. It is now my privilege to introduce some of the wonderful groups who have been here with us and through this from right from the start. Pete Duffy, National Guard Association of the United States, if you would like to say a few words. Thanks, sir. Thank you so much. I'm Pete Duffy, Legislation Director for the National Guard Association. Senator Donnelly, thank you for what you've done, this proactivity, and thank you, Senator Wicker. This is, this is terrific stuff. For the last seven years, the National Guard Association has been working to try and establish community-based mental health care for the National Guard. Our Army National Guard had the highest rate of suicide in the military in 2013, 33.4 suicides for every 100,000 troops, high rate. We need to get our arms around following through with community-based programs. This is a terrific step forward. We're going to have the assessments. Now we need to have funded programs to address mental health concerns when they're discovered in the assessments. The tragedy to Jacob, Jacob's family, the losing unit, the loss of readiness cannot continue. This is such a wonderful step in the right direction. OSD has to take seriously funding National Guard mental health care. They've refused to spend money on this in the past. That has to change. Thank you, sir. Thank you. John Madigan, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Thank you, Senator Donnelly, and uh, I'll thank Senator Worker when it comes in. The, the volunteers of, of the Indiana Division and the Mississippi Division, thank you very much um, for all of your leadership. Um, my good friend, Major, uh, Major General Mark Graham, reminds me often, we are the land of the free because of the brave. Let's honor all of our service members by freeing them of the stigma or inability to get mental health services. Let's make sure the Jacob Sexton Bill is included in the 2015 NDAA and our volunteers across the country are calling all 100 of your colleagues to get them to vote yes. So thank, thank you, very, you much. very much. Okay. Thank you. Next would be Karen Canefield, American Association of Suicide Adults. Thank you, Senator Donnelly, for inviting us to be here. As the nation's first and oldest organization devoted to the study and prevention of suicide, the American Association of Suicidology is pleased and honored to endorse the Jacob Sexton Military Suicide Prevention Act. While much has been done in recent years to address the issue of military suicides, there is much more that remains to be done. There is no one suicide prevention program or tool that will bring about a decrease in the suicide rate among our military members. Rather, it requires a 360-degree approach where suicide prevention becomes everyone's business. In addition to peer-to-peer -peer programs, routine mental health assessments by trained behavioral health and primary care providers is one of the most effective tools we have today. The Sexton Act's focus on non-deployed members, active, reserve, and guard components is particularly admirable as these are groups that have often been previously overlooked and neglected. Furthermore, we must work toward reducing barriers to accessing the care that is needed by addressing stigma and ensuring that privacy concerns are addressed and rigorously enforced. 
Finally, it's critical to maintain an ongoing awareness and assessment of suicide prevention programs that are currently in place to ensure the efficacy and validity of these programs. Thank you again for Thank having you. us here. Thank you. Kathleen Mobler of the National Military Family Senator Donnelly, I'd like to offer my personal thanks. As the mother of two currently serving OEF veterans, uh, this is very important to our family as well. But the National Military Family Association is gravely concerned about the military suicide rate, and we firmly believe that additional steps must be taken to address this issue. Although great strides have been made in addressing the stigma of mental health issues, we know that barriers to seeking care still exist. For this reason, we thank Senator Donnelly for introducing the Jacob Sexton Act, which will mandate annual mental health screenings for all active duty, National Guard, and Reserve members. Our association believes there are three important benefits to annual mental health screenings. First, mandated assessments will help in further reducing the stigma associated with mental health care. Second, screening should help identify service members who would benefit from further evaluation and care. And finally, annual face-to-face -face mental health assessments will present service members who realize they are struggling with an opportunity to easily reach out for assistance, helping those who may not have proactively sought care. We are grateful that Senator Donnelly's legislation requires the Pentagon report to evaluate existing military mental health practices and provide recommendations for improvement. The mental health system provides world-class battlefield medicine and has made great advances in polytrauma care during the recent wars. We believe that DOD also has an obligation to lead the way in treatment of the signature invisible wounds associated with the protracted wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. It is a moral imperative to provide service members with the help they need after years of enduring repeated combat deployments to ensure they are ready to, prepare, to meet the challenges of the future. Military family members, often the first to recognize behavioral challenges faced by service members, can only be helped by this legislation in their role as caregivers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Andrew Sperling, National Alliance on Mental Illness. I'm Andrew Sperling with the National Alliance on Mental Illness. Uh, NAMI wants to offer its uh, thanks for the hard work that Senator Donnelly and Senator Wicker put into to getting this important legislation over the finish line. Uh, a couple of points that NAMI would like to make that's really important about this legislation. Number one is it extends screening beyond just the, re the, the regular active duty service of the Guard and the Reserves. This is absolutely critical. When post-deployment and post-separation, when these young men and women go back in their community from the Guard and Reserves, they're by and large far away from military bases where there's lots of support available to them. So the fact that we extend that screening to the Guard and Reserves is absolutely critical. Uh, number two, we get beyond the deployment cycle. Uh, the data tells us from the National Institute of Mental Health uh, collaboration that they did with the Department of the Army, the STAR study, which is the largest study uh, of, 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 of suicidality in the military that's ever been done. Uh, in fact, for, for part of that study, the, the, both the attempt and completion rate of suicide uh, for those that had no deployments, it's actually higher than those that had deployments. Uh, so we've got to get beyond just screening in the deployment cycle uh, to get across and, and touch military uh, people who serve in the Guard and Reserves and active duty uh, in a broader spectrum uh, to get screening available to them and make sure that treatment is available. And that's going to be beyond just the military and the VA because these young men and women return to their community, again, far away from large military bases, to make sure that after we screen, we get them the treatment and services they need uh, uh, to, uh, to avoid further problems. So thank you, Senator Donnelly. Thank you, Senator Wicker, on behalf of NAMI. Thank you very much. And finally, Roger Smith, the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy. Thank you very much. We would like to thank Senator Donnelly and Senator Wicker for their leadership on this issue. On behalf of 26,000 members, the American Association for Marriage and Family Therapy is pleased to endorse Senator Donnelly's Jacob Sexton Military Suicide Prevention Act. With the extensive number of recent mul multiple combat deployments, our military members face unprecedented challenges. These challenges can be particularly difficult for deployed National Guard and Reserve members, as well as for service members' families. Senator Donnelly's important legislation will require all service members to receive annual mental health assessments and clinical follow-ups when appropriate. 
We believe that this act will help reduce the number of military suicides and go a long way towards improving care for our injured service members. Thank you very much. Thank you.